Um, right, we'll just get started and if anybody else joins us, um, that's great. So as I say, we are recording the session. Please feel free to um, put your camera off if you don't want to appear on that. Um, and just if you could keep your microphone off if you're not speaking, that just helps with the background noise as well. So I'm Kim Wallace from Social Enterprise Scotland. So it's great to welcome you to this afternoon's session on the Social Enterprise World Forum Verification. Um, delighted that Social Enterprise Scotland's partnered with SCWF and we've been working um, for a few months now to bring this affordable and accessible verification system to our members. Um, it's part of a global verification that gives access to work amongst international institutions to expand funding, pro bono and discounted services as well as procurement opportunities. I'm delighted that we've got Rebecca Day from Social Enterprise World Forum joining us today to give us an overview um, and what organisations need to do to consider um, to, to register um, and some more on the benefits. Um, so Rebecca is going to give us a presentation and then after that um, we'll open up for some from Q for some Q&A um, discussion. Um, okay, okay, so I'm just going to hand over Rebecca to you. Hi. Good. Oh, I was just about to say good morning, everybody, but um, actually, because I'm in Michigan in the US. <laughs> so, but originally from the Isle of Arran and um, have been living out in the US for about 10 years. So my accent goes all over the place. But um, I work for the Social Enterprise World Forum part time. I also run um, by Social USA, which uh, does social procurement work across the United States. And um, I've been working with the Social Enterprise World Forum for about a year and a half to help bring a, a verification system for social enterprises, as Kim said. So um, I'm just going to talk you through a few slides about um, why we did it, why we set it up in the first place, um, and the sort of global landscape of, of what we're trying to achieve and then I've got just five slides that talk through in more detail about the criteria for the verification itself um, so that you can see an example of, of how simple it is. And hopefully um, that will help it to help you make it more real for yourselves. And then um, we can just do some Q&A at the end. More than happy for people to ask questions as we go as well. I might not be able to see you. So um, once I start sharing my screen so if you just want to chip in with questions that's totally fine with me as well happy for you to ask anything as we as we go along um it's pretty informal and the idea is just to to give you as much background as we can so to start off um so as i said this uh the verification system um has been developed for social enterprises um, right across the world by the Social Enterprise World Forum or SEWF as we call it. Um, and this is the verification badge on the right hand side. We actually have two versions of the badge which I'll talk about in a, in a minute, but, um, but this is the one that would be for your enterprises. So we developed the affordable accessible verification system because we wanted to recognize existing certifications and uh, verifications that are throughout the world through something we call a double badge partnership, but also to expand verification to areas where it doesn't exist right now. So there's actually very few countries that have their own verification system for a social enterprise. And there's also lots and lots of disparity around the world in terms of the terminology. So in many countries, people don't even use the word social enterprise. And yet we all have this shared set of values, a shared um, set of, you know, mission, the why, the why we're here doing this work in social enterprise um, is common across all countries, but the language we use is not. So we wanted to have a sort of simple imagery that could be recognized anywhere that was not necessarily using terminology that's only used in a few countries. So hence people and planet first became the um, badge that we adopted for the verification. 
And this actually came through consultation with about 40 different countries who were all getting involved in rolling out verification with us. So we had a lot of back and forth consultation around how do we make this truly accessible to every country? So what we're trying to do is use simple imagery, simple terminology that really could be understood anywhere. But common to all of this is that an organization has to meet um, three broad values. They have to exist to solve a social and or environmental problem and prioritize purpose, people and planet over profit in strategic and operational decisions. They have to have a self-sustaining revenue model and reinvest the majority of their surplus into their purpose. And they have to choose a legal structure or financing that protects and locks in that purpose long term. And this isn't this idea of, of locking in purpose and choosing legal structures and so on might seem less important in a country where there exists a legal structure that you can adopt as a social enterprise. So something like a community interest company um, is an example of a legal structure that you can use when you're a social enterprise. But actually, in most countries throughout the world, there is no legal structure for a social enterprise to adopt. So, for example, here in the United States, where we think we have you know, 1.3 million social enterprises, there's actually zero legal structures that are specifically for a social enterprise. So you could be one of all kinds of different legal structure and still be a social enterprise, which is one of the reasons why the verification is so important, because it helps to show that, um, that we are all meeting these same core criteria. And the idea is that we can then have a brand that can be recognized anywhere. It could be used in um, business to business facing uh, enterprises. It could be used business to consumer facing enterprises. It should be an easily recognizable badge that people would see on products and services and websites and in a coffee shop and on a t-shirt and just go, oh yeah, I know what that is and I trust it because I know that it meets these criteria. So the idea is to really provide a consumer facing brand that works across all languages and all different legal entities that are available and uh, different terminologies that are used around the world so that we can prevent social washing, greenwashing, false claims, um, the things that we're seeing becoming more and more prevalent, unfortunately, where consumers want to buy something really good from a company that they can trust and um, people can slip through the cracks and and offer something that they pretend is is uh, similar to a social enterprise but actually isn't is just purely for private profit and across the world right now so we are working with 45 different country partners um, we've got probably more than 45 um, potential future partners as well. So this has really grown very fast. Um, but we're currently verifying enterprises across all of these countries, and I'm not gonna read through them, but you can see it's really diverse in terms of the number of different countries around the world that are getting verified. So the actual process itself is really straightforward. We're trying to make it as straightforward as low impact for social enterprise leaders as possible. There are three steps. Uh, the first one is to set up a free profile on a, a website, a database called Good Market. And I'll talk more about Good Market in a moment. But the Good Market is a social enterprise itself. Um, it has a very straightforward form that you answer yes, no questions to. And it is a a website for any impact organization that sells goods or services, B2B or B2C. It really is about um, creating a network of impact 
organisations all over the world. And uh, Social Enterprise Scotland has a network page there. So you would be able to be part of the Social Enterprise Scotland network, as well as um, use this for the first step for your, or the only step for your verification. So you set up your free profile on Good Market, you go through the questions and you just say no to anything that doesn't apply. Um, it usually takes about 30 minutes to fill in the form. And at the end, and I'll show you an image of this, but at the end of the form, you just check a box that says um, that you want to use your application as um, part of becoming People and Planet First verified. Once your good market profile is published, we then send you a link to pay the administration fee. So the fee for verification is £70 for the initial fee. It's then £50 a year after that. And really that just covers the administration cost of hosting the website and doing all of the admin back and forth and uh, web hosting and so on of the verification itself. And then lastly, after you've paid, you just fill in the verification form. And as I said, I'll talk you through that step by step in, in a couple of slides time. But we're going to have you answer five criteria. Say which one you think your social enterprise achieves and then um, how you think you achieve that. And lastly, upload some evidence to prove what you claimed in the text box above. So there are, I'm just going to move some people in who are in the waiting room because it's stopping my presentation from working. There we go. Um, so Good Market, just to talk about that briefly. Good Market is a, it's an online data commons. It is um, a software that helps us to manage the verification process and keep the cost the way that we do. There's no way we could afford to offer it as cheaply as we do. Um, but it offers a free curation process to us. So they actually check the claims of all of the enterprises that apply to become part of Good Market to make sure that they are genuine, um, not doing harm to people and planet. You have to meet their minimum standards in order to be accepted as a, a vendor on Good Market. But they, walk, they work across all sectors and legal registrations and languages. Um, the form itself is available in multiple languages. There's probably actually more than 3,000 enterprises there now, um, but there's also lots of networks. So as I said, Social Enterprise Scotland has a network page. So does the World Fair Trade Organization and Ashoka and lots of other international networks and national networks. And there are people there from 78 countries so far. And it was completely designed as a social enterprise to support existing networks and, and local groups. And the, one of the reasons it's good for us to use Good Market is because if an enterprise applies and they don't actually qualify for verification yet, they've still got a free public profile on um, Good Market. They've still met their minimum standards, so they can still you know, communicate with others around the world. They can still be part of a marketplace and um, access other services. But the other reason we use it is because they've provided, the, the Good Market software team have provided integrations into other software tools and platforms, um, which has been really helpful to us. So one of the benefits of being SEWF verified is that you get a free um, seller profile on SAP's business network, which used to be called Ariba. It's their global um, purchasing platform where I think something like 80% of the world's purchasing transactions goes through the Ariba software. They've rebranded it now to be called the business network. Um, but we have a an API integration, which is working behind the scenes between the SEWF verification and the SAP business network to ensure that if a vendor wants to purchase from a verified social enterprise, they would be able to search SEWF verified 
and it would immediately speak back and forth to the good market to say, yes, this organization is currently a verified enterprise and can be trusted. And then we also have um, an integration with trust law as well, which I'll talk about in a minute. So it operates as a, a digital commons. It's structured as a social enterprise itself, and it is actually verified by SEWF as well. So why you would get involved? Um, there are many reasons, as we said, like one of the things is that we want to find ways for funding opportunities, pro bono services and discounts that are currently limit limited to charities and nonprofits to be opened up to social enterprises. So that's one of the key reasons. Um, there are actually all kinds of organizations around the world who want to offer discounts to social enterprises, but didn't really know how to a find them because they're called lots of different things in different countries, but b understand a sort of commonality about all of them. Um, and this verification helps with that. The other thing is that it provides access to a network of international companies that are looking at social procurement. So, as I said, with SAP and um, and trust law. And then lastly, um, access to global marketplaces and procurement platforms, but um, looking at things like how do we bring about other pro bono services. So we're actually in discussion at the moment. We're hoping this year to be able to have a strategic partnership with one of the biggest um, software providers that gives pro bono and discounted software to charities right now. But we're hoping to open that up to be all verified social enterprises across the world as well, which would save thousands of pounds for um, social enterprises everywhere and um, really good access to lots of much needed and much used software that uh, things like Microsoft Office and um, Adobe and Zoom, all sorts of things that, that we might use right now, having those uh, be offered to social enterprises at either discounted or free would be a fantastic benefit to the social enterprise movement. But lastly, we want people around the world to be able to recognize a social enterprise. There's, there's some stats that say there's more than 11 million social enterprises in the world. And right now, I think if you went up to most people in the street and said, what's a social enterprise, you'd get a variety of different responses. And what we want is for people just to be able to easily say, oh yeah, those are organizations that put people and planet first um, above private profit. Any questions at this point before I talk through the, the actual process itself of verification? Nope, everybody's stunned into silence. I'll just carry on. So, um, okay, so the actual process itself. Within your good market profile, you, um, as I said, you get published, you pay the verification fee, you then, um, at the back end, we then uh, allocate you a section where you can fill in what's called the SEWF verification form within your own profile page. So there are five criteria <clears throat> that everybody fills in. You have to score at least one point in every criteria in order to be verified. But what that allows for is a variety of different legal structures and um, different types of organization from all over the world, as I said, uh, rather than just looking at things like a governing document where probably 90 percent of the world doesn't actually even have a governing document necessarily that is specific to a social enterprise. So we'll go through the five criteria. The first one is your purpose. So you choose which of these purpose statements you think most uh, relates to your social enterprise. Um, I'm using a, an example here that's actually from the United States. Um, so you choose the purpose. This one says it exists to solve a social or environmental problem. Social or environmental purpose is publicly communicated online and is included in governing documents. 
and the enterprise monitors and publicly reports impact related to its purpose. So that would be the four points um, criteria there. Then you fill in the text box with a simple statement that explains how you met the how you think you meet the criteria. So this one says EcoAbility is registered as a 501c3 organization in the USA and has publicly stated its purpose in its art articles of incorporation, it monitors its impact and is reported in the annual report. And then you upload evidence that supports your claim. So this one is they've uploaded articles in incorporation and an annual report. Very straightforward, should be information that any enterprise has to hand. Um, and it, as I said, the minimum requirement is that you exist to solve a social or environmental problem, you have that purpose publicly communicated online, and you plan to update your governing documents to include the purpose. And the reason that we have that criteria is, as I said, because a lot of countries don't even have a governing document. And so with the relationship we now have with trust law, offering pro bono legal services to social enterprises that are verified, we're enabling them to work alongside trust law to get legal help to write a governing document suitable for their country to be able to, to verify that. The second one is operations. So you have to be able to show that you prioritize purpose, people and planet over profit in operational decisions. Again, you have to score a minimum of one. And um, when it says meets minimum sector standards, that's the minimum standards uh, that are listed out on Good Market, which we can send a link to. Um, but those are minimum standards of doing no harm to people and planet in the work that you do. And various, you know, you can you can reach up to four points on this one as well. So you choose what the criteria. Again, you say how you meet it. So this one says we state on our website that our mission for people and about our mission for people and planet and our products have been vetted by Good Market. And then there's a screenshot is the evidence upload, which is a screenshot of the website of the organization showing the people and planet is prioritized by the organization and that it's a social enterprise existing to support people. Number three is revenue. So this one's interesting because um, it allows for startup enterprises to be part of the um, verification process. Several of the existing um, verifications and so on that are out there don't necessarily allow for that and, and want an organization to already be self-sustaining completely. But actually for a lot of startups, that's not possible. They might have, you know, investments and grants or something like that to get them started. So here the minimum standard would be that you have financial records that show your earning in income from selling products or services or reciprocal grant contracts, which sometimes throws people. So that means um, a reciprocal gr grant contract is a contract where yes, you're getting a grant, but the grant is for a specific output like um, employing 20 homeless people per year, for example, would be a reciprocal service contract um, that might be covered by a grant with a local authority or um, or an institution. Again, so this one, EcoAbility says that it's only meeting number one, but that's okay. It's saying it is selling, um, making revenue from selling goods and services, but it's also raised some funds through regular fundraising. It's not yet self-sustaining. Um, but it plans to be so, and they've uploaded um, their income and expenditure sheet and um, tax return for 2022. Number four, use of surplus. So this one shows that you reinvest the majority of your surplus towards your purpose. And again, this is another one where in different countries, there are different um, criteria that are considered standard practice. Um, so the minimum bar is that you are reinvesting not less than 50% of your um, profit into your purpose. And you should have that 
hopefully written into a governing document, but if you don't, you should have it as a public commitment um, stated on your website. So this organization says 100% of the surplus is reinvested. And it's again, showing um, an income and expenditure sheet from the previous year to, to show how it did that. The last one is about your structure. And this one, is saying that you're choosing a legal structure and financing that protect and lock in your purpose long, long term. So what we mean by financing is, for example, you're not taking investment from venture capital that's looking to have you sell the organization in five years for a 20x return on their investment or something like that. You're, you're only using um, you might be using a social enterprise loan or something like that, or you might have other forms of financing for the organization, but you're not looking to do it um, to sell out. So the next steps uh, for your organization would literally be just to create a free profile page for your enterprise on Good Market, uh, and then get verified and join the global promotion work, which is about to start happening. Um, as I say, this is you're actually getting a sneak peek of uh, the new branding logo, which is going live tomorrow. <laughs> so um, so you're seeing it a day ahead of time. But um, the idea is that because we have so many partners now around the world, we're going to be uh, coming together to look at how we can do a global marketing campaign, all organizations, um, consumer facing brands, as well as uh, infrastructure organizations like Social Enterprise Scotland coming together to do joint marketing across a shared set of values. If any of your enterprises are already on good market, and also this is the page I was talking about earlier, um, you would just go back into your profile account um, and on the final page, you can select that you want to use your good market application for uh, people and planet first verification. And um, you can also use it to make sure that you're in the Buy Social Scotland network as well. And that is that. Any questions and I will yes. stop sharing so I can see you. That's right. great. Thanks very much, Rebecca. It's really um useful just to kind of go through all the different steps there. And um, we do have a couple of questions. I'll bring in you, Alistair, and then I noticed Danielle's put a couple of questions in the, the chat okay. as well. So over to you first, <clears throat> Alistair. In terms of structure of an organization that would be say applying, um, if there is a parent charity with a social enterprise subsidiary um, and it's set up on that kind of basis, um, would uh, one membership, one verification cover the charity and the social enterprise um, entity? So it could be done either way. We have organisations that have done that. Um, so sometimes it would really be about looking at the criteria. So if you think back to the criteria of how you make revenue and things like that, if there is an overarching charity that is more grant reliant than, and it's not a grant that's for, um, for service outputs, as I mentioned earlier, then it would be more sensible to just verify the actual social enterprise that, that is owned by the charity, if you like, or, you know, that has a, a charity as a parent company. Um, but if the overall charity were to meet all of the criteria, then there's no reason that it couldn't be the overall charity that does the verification and that that cascades down into the into the enterprise. Yeah, no, I think that in the, uh, in the image I have, the parent charity would actually meet the criteria um, yeah. in any case. Um, but it's just, uh, um, but there is a potential um, development um, which would, if you like, mean that there is an addition. There might, there may be an additional social enterprise emerging, and it would be useful, I think, in this scenario to have probably one 
uh, you know, one membership would probably cover the requirements of both as yep. if this developed. Yeah. Thanks, Alistair. Um, Danielle, I think you've got a couple of questions there I can bring you in. I think that last question probably answers one of your questions, which was around your converting to a skill. So a skill would be eligible, Danielle, okay. the same as a, a charity. Um, what, what was your other questions, if you want to come in? Uh, I suppose there's two. There was the, the, the one was about what is it more driven by? Is it you know, this platform, are people looking for products or services? Do we have, like, statistics? What are people searching for? Like, what, what are they using it for? Do we have information about that? You're talking about Good Market as a as a platform? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Good Market is, is part of the verification because we're using it as the, as the database, if you like. But... It's not just good market that's then driving the so the SAP integration, for example, into you know their purchasing platform. Um, we're able to utilize the good market platform for that, but there are actually organizations, Social Enterprise Scotland, you know, by Social Canada, by Social USA, etc., that are then pushing out and brokering relationships and contracting and purchasing from social enterprises in in country uh, the idea of good market is just that we can use it because it's so global friendly um, but in terms of what's sold on good market right now it really is across the board uh, goods and services so okay it's um and also there are um they've created things like the ability for an organization to have a white label marketplace so for example um you could have a b2c white label marketplace of all of your verified members that shows all of their services that are for sale for yep. example or sh showed all of their goods so the, so good market is more it's our vehicle for being able to do this and do it cheaply and so on but it's also very um flexible in terms of b2b and b2c and people are searching for all kinds of different things on there not least of all buying things from each other so being yeah. able to find other enterprises that sell things that they need, right, for, so you can buy, um, you know, wholesale goods to actually create products as well as end, end user products or services. And can you, so do you mind, so I've got a couple of questions, does everyone mind if I just ask while we're on this kind of role? So yeah, is, that, is that fine? Um, so yeah so can you then have so say for example like just, I'll give you an example so we have recently just designed some of our own products which have been designed by the young people that we support so that's a product but what we're trying to push is so I'm a, a teaching horse facilitator which I did my I did my um I was in North Carolina at the start of the year so I worked for a teaching horse so they provide leadership I don't know if you've heard of them um, no I haven't and, it sounds interesting uh, return, yeah, it returned to freedom is amazing. It's a wild Mustang sanctuary where they work with Duracell, Pepsi, so big organizations to try and adopt a shared leadership approach, which is inspired by how horses lead their herds. Now, that's a service we're trying to push. That's something that yeah. I've just become qualified as an international coach. But for me, procurement is still a bit of a nightmare, trying to understand how it works, trying to get into the right markets, because internationally, teaching horses used a lot for big companies in Britain it's not we have a totally different culture to leadership mm -hmm. you know in America Singapore Australia it's much more experiential learning um corporate coaching is quite a normal thing you know the the money is quite high but I find in this country it's not so to try and set up a service that's international what support would you be getting because there'd be lots more nooks and crooks to add to that because you'd be looking at turning it into more of a destination and that would need development on its own before you could even put it on the platform. So suppose taking all that in, can you have multiple services? And is there support if you wanted to develop a service to send out for procurement to an international market? That's two questions, sorry, I understand. So, so there's two different answers to that because yeah. um, let, me just, let me just share screen with you for one second on good market. So this is the good market marketplace itself, right? So this is, as I said, this is for everybody. It's not just for verified enterprises, but you can see at the top they have either you can search by all kinds of marketplace listing or you can look at 
shopping for things, sourcing wholesale material supplies, services like consulting, local services, etc. You can look for work on there. You can in invest on there you could do visiting and destination type purchasing where it's the ecotourism things like that and you can also um, search for events online resources networks etc so so it really does cover like a such a broad um you could have multiple listings that were under yeah. multiple different headings right so that's that's one piece and they have um the marketplace itself is set up so that it kind of walks you through how to um, how to package what it is that you're going to be selling. So it'll ask you questions. Do you need to include shipping in this? Do you need to, you know, and do you know what that shipping cost is? Or can we help you to work out what that is? Or and things like, do you need to include, yeah, so like if you need to include accommodation, if you were inviting a corporate client yeah. from the far yeah okay yeah. That, yeah. okay so so it has you know multiple different things and you can search here on the left you can see that you can search by these different categories so under shop there's lots of categories under source there's lots of categories service is the same um so as i said you can you can really choose under a number of different things and um so that's good market itself and then in terms of things like um, putting a listing into the SAP business network, so you could absolutely list your services and those would go out globally to anybody who is searching for the kinds of services that you're talking about. You would have a free seller profile on the business network's global purchasing platform. And what we find is that well, it, it isn't wrong that 80% of the world's purchasing happens through that, but that's like universities, governments, corporations. It, it's just big and small organizations all over the world are doing their purchasing through there. So there's, I can't even remember how many trillion dollars worth of spend goes through that platform. Well, no, but I the can idea imagine because, yeah, just doing, just we, we were in London doing an engagement for Medic Pharmaceuticals and this is not little money they're spending for a day's yeah, engagement. Exactly. This 20, 25 grand, you know, yep. for an engagement. So that's what that's what got me interested in it. I'm not sure the government are ready to tackle a shared leadership approach yet, but <laughs> maybe one day. <laughs> 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 but um but yeah so that's that's where the in integration with sap like there are um onboarding people who will help you with onboarding your profile into sap um so that it can be found and uh, and is there and a cost say, to that is yeah. there a cost to that yeah. support you know, so that that forms part of the package yep yeah so um and there's you know there may be times that as you're scaling up your enterprise you do need um forms of support that are out with this but then that's why you're part of social enterprise scotland it's why you're part of this global community um you know one of the things on the on the good market platform as well is that it has community pages so people post things like okay how do i navigate this right and other people will respond to you from all over the world saying oh yeah we've done that right this is what we did so it's it's a really good way of of helping you to learn from others and, and get support from other organizations as well as within social enterprise scotland within um you know within the the broader community so just just and, in the back danny i don't know if you're aware of the program that's available in scotland that ceis are managing which is the international social enterprise observatory um, so no. there's some direct support through that programme for any um, social enterprise in Scotland that's looking to trade international. So I uh, can email you the link to that. Yeah, support. that would be great. Yeah, awesome. Because yeah. we, I mean, like we we did use the procurement system recently for the for a SIPA tender, and that was bringing in international people. So the the, the group was actually made up of seven Americans, two Australians, me, and someone from England. Um, but I just find Scottish public procurement really difficult to navigate. So for me, it's like it's another difficult platform to try and then navigate again because it's, they're all just so confusing. 
but yeah, that, that it just it's just just so I understand all the concepts. But that's great, Kim. Thank you, and thanks for answering all my questions, Rebecca. Yeah, no problem. Um, Dale, get any questions for Rebecca? No other questions. Okay, okay. Um, we can, Rebecca, we can share your slides, can we, after the session? For them that want yeah, to so we, can, we can send out a copy of um, the slides. Um, we've got, Kirsty's just going to put up on the screen just now, three really quick questions, if you don't mind, just to, to fill that in, and um, just helps us when we're planning future um, seminars and webinars. It's quite useful to get feedback from people that are on the call. Um, and yeah, just thanks for coming along today. Um, we'll send out the, the, the slides from this afternoon um, and, and obviously the link as well if folk are, are keen to sign up for verification. Um, and please do just give us a shout if there's anything else. Um, thanks very much, Rebecca. I'm glad that we've managed to yeah, get you're welcome. Your, you're not out your bed at like four in the morning or five in the morning. <laughs> so I'm glad that we've been able to make that time work for us all. Um, so yeah, Donner. thanks very much. Very for reasonable. This afternoon. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Take care, folks.